Teaching Brood. Today's episode, we're going to talk about the best ways to introduce tech to students. It's the beginning of the school year, there's a lot of stuff to know, and then all of a sudden you've got a class set or a few pieces of technology that you've got to figure out how to use with your students. Now what? I mean, this is going to, this is in my opinion, is one of the most fun times of the year um, because this is the time where you get into most more exploration and you get into um, the kids intrigue is at their highest because it's because it's a lot of stuff to them man what level you're at of course is often new and the teacher is new and the grade level is new so there's a bit of anxiousness but there's also a bit of intrigue and the desire to be creative and kind of be to learn for a lot of kids is really strong at this stage um, so the way of introducing tech to students there's no systematic, there's no right or wrong absolute way here. But there are certain things that most tech educators and teachers will agree are must-dos at the beginning of the year to introduce tech to students. Most important thing, and I think everybody's on board with this one, is the fact that it has to have a really good basis in digital citizenship. Absolutely. You, kids yeah. have to know what is okay and not okay in terms of online behavior. We don't need any more cyber bullies in the world. No, absolutely not. Um, I mean, there's a lot of resources out there, and every every school typically has their own different program as to how they introduce digital citizenship. Yep. Uh, one of the better ones that I know of is through Common Sense Media. Absolutely. They I have recommend fen- that one. Yeah, they have phenomenal stuff. It costs you a little bit of money, but it's worth every penny of it. Um, other big suggestion that a lot of tech educators will agree on is this is a phenomenal time to collaborate with your counseling department. Uh, get in touch with your guidance counselors and work with them to do the tech education because it's not very often that the, te- that the guidance counselor and the tech teacher and the classroom teacher can collaborate on something as smooth and coherent and fluid as this. So get them on board if they're not. It is important. And this is something that actually works whole school. So if you've got a house system, then you could actually be doing activities that are vertical instead of all the horizontal stuff that normally happens just within the grade level. Exactly. There could be protégés and mentors uh, situation going on between various grade levels or various divisions of the school. You could have high schoolers mentoring middle schoolers. You could have middle schoolers mentoring elementary students. And even the littlies. Absolutely. Yeah, you could have you could have their their middle school or elementary school buddies, you know, mentoring the littlies on digital citizenship. It, it totally works that way. So then, okay, we've got the good basis of, the found, we've got the foundation put in place, they've got good digital citizenship, and then step two. Well, step two is, is where it gets a bit broader and kind of gets a bit more fluid, but the key word that most tech educators will agree on is exploration. It's the idea of giving kids the chance to look through and kind of investigate the devices that you have available. And for various schools, that'll be different things. For some schools, you're sharing a set of laptops on a cart. For some schools, you're sharing iPads on a cart. For some schools, you're teched to the hilt, and you've got one-to-one laptops, you've got iPads in the classroom, and you have access to iPod touches and et cetera. I actually read of one school this summer, they're now two-to-one. So they've got two devices for every kid. That's just amazing. It is amazing, potential for overkill, but amazing. And if it's something where you're in a school that hasn't normally done exploration type activities, then you can set out some challenges. So it can be, I need somebody to go figure out how to change the colors of the font. I need somebody to figure out how to add shapes. I need somebody to go figure out. And the kids will rise to those challenges. It's a little bit more direct for them and it gives them a little bit more scaffolding and it helps build their confidence level so that the next time they're faced with something new, they're a little bit more willing to dive right in. It's all true, and it also allows you to, to identify student leaders in your classroom or in the various classes you have. Um, if you've got a kid who immediately latches onto something and then is able to pick through it and play through it and figure out a lot of stuff that a lot of kids are struggling with, you've got a student leader right there. And you can, you can kind of talk to that kid and figure out what they know, what they already Maybe they played with a lot of stuff over the summer, and as a result, they know how to do this already. Now, one of the things, we did a survey, sent it out to a whole bunch of people. We've got uh, results from all over the world. And something that is really key is make sure that whatever you choose to use, whether it's a piece of hardware or a piece of software, make sure that it makes sense for your lesson, for your objectives. 
don't just start playing with stuff because hey, it's cool and it sparkles and does tricks. And this is then. Mandy and I, in the past, have done a very, very similar workshop on this topic about what makes sense to use in the classroom and how do you filter through the good stuff versus the bad stuff. Every, not every program you have in your, in your computers or in your iPads is going to be useful. A lot of the stuff is going to be, you know, it's going to be a waste of your time, to be honest with you. So just, you need to go through that iPad, you need to go through that computer first and kind of figure out what you think will be useful for the kids. And you know what? Later down the road, a couple of kids may figure out, hey, this app that I thought was you, that teacher thought was useless, is actually really useful for this purpose. Let them go with it. If they figure that out right away, they give them a chance to explore it and see if they can prove you wrong. Because you know what? There's a chance that you are. Which actually brings up a really good point, and that's again something else that came back on our survey: is allow yourself to be wrong. Let the kids teach you. Mm. You do not need to know everything. In this day and age, technology is changing so fast. You can't keep up with everything. Even your tech leaders are not on top of everything. They're on top of a few things. And that needs to be the same thing in your classroom. Let your students teach you. Yep. Let them figure it out and be open to that. I mean, it, it, I'm going to give a weird example here because it's new. But guarantee, when you come back, a lot of your kids will have tried and may be a level 30 trainer on Pokemon Go. It maxes out at level 40. Um, and you might not have tried this. Be open to the idea of them explaining that program to you. And if they have an idea about how it could work in the classroom, go for it. It's a new thing. It's something they're really into. If they're passionate about it, which a lot of kids are these days, as we walk around Hong Kong, we can see that firsthand. Go with the idea and then learn about it, learn a bit about it yourself. Be open to the idea of, well, always learning. So... That's kind of the big thing about tech at the beginning of the year, being open to exploration. Once they have that foundation of digital citizenship, once they know what the boundaries are, let them explore inside those boundaries. And then start building in structured lessons as time goes on. Like in the case of, because I teach grade three, I can tell you that after I give them some freedom to explore Drive and Gmail and stuff like that, then I'll create a structured lesson on how to send their first email or how to write their first doc, or how to share with their first doc. And it's typically integrated inside the units. And yet it'll be, it'll be pretty obvious in a lot of cases where to integrate that stuff right away. But that, to me, once they've had a good chance to explore, then start creating purpose-driven purpose lessons that work your curriculum with your technology. So that way, you meet all the demands right away. And I think that's gonna be key to getting them more in-depth familiar, giving them some real time to dig deeper into a program. There's one other piece of advice that people gave in our survey, which I really think is important, and I definitely had to learn this one the hard way. But when you do start incorporating technology into your lessons, expect that things are gonna go wrong. Oh yes. You're gonna have one kid's laptop that just refuses to connect to the internet. Or you're going to have the day when the whole network goes down and that really cool lesson you had planned is going to have to wait. Um, have a game plan for that kind of a thing in terms of, okay, we're going to be able to double up on the laptops or you've got, you can swap around and do a different activity first and then come back. Uh, one teacher has a rule of thumb that she, in her classroom, if the student has an issue, they call over a tech student to help them. If within five minutes it's not solved, the teacher goes over. Within five minutes of the teacher going over, if it's not solved, the student goes down to the tech office. And th at that point, the teacher has only lost five minutes of her lesson time because she's only troubleshooting for five minutes, and the rest of the time it's the students that are doing things. So the students are gaining some autonomy, they're gaining some responsibility, and the lessons are still being learned. And on that similar note, one thing to remember as we introduce tech to our students is there's one big thing that teachers need to have. And it's the one thing we lose from far too quickly. Patience. Patience. <laughs> when you've got a bunch of learners figuring things out for the first time or the second time or the 15th time. Or the 150th time. There is going to be hands up. There's going to be teacher, 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 teacher. And I don't, I don't care whether you're teaching middle school, high school, or elementary school. 
that's going to happen. Especially if you're giving something like exploration time. I can't figure this out. I can't figure this out. Remind them to ask their fellow students. Remind them to ask the student leaders in the classroom. But have patience with the process. And if you don't know something, tell them. Say, look, I don't know this yet, but I'll try to figure this out for next time. Be okay with telling them that you don't know this. If you are new to tech, if you are new to having stuff into your in your classrooms, then start small. Focus on one thing first. Mm. So maybe that is something as simple as uploading PDFs onto your LMS system, whether you've got a Moodle, a Schoology, or any of the other ones that are out there. Start small. Maybe that's all you do for the first semester. And in the second semester, maybe you'll do an online quiz. Or maybe you'll try to introduce an, an app into your class. That's fine. You don't need to do all of it all at once. I know it can be intimidating to see other teachers who are very familiar with tech. But they had to start somewhere too. They were all they were in your position as well. So don't expect to know it all immediately. It takes years and years and years. And once you're up to snuff, so to speak, keeping ahead of that curve is a con is a constant process. And impossible because that curve is constantly moving. Oh yeah. So like we said, have patience with the process. Learn. Be, don't be afraid to be wrong and give kids the chance to explore. And I will say one last thing before we go on this today. Don't shy away from introducing coding early. Don't shy away from introducing design tech early. And there's new tools out for that too. So, have a great day. Have a great start to your year. And good luck with all of your tech. Have fun.